Uh, I, I looked it up in my diary the other day, and it was in January 1991 when I got a telephone call from this strange chap, Tim Taylor. And he came down on that first occasion, down on several other occasions, uh, to thrash out ideas for the format of this new archaeological programme. Originally, it seemed that it was going to be more of a game show, a la Annika Rice and Treasure Hunt. Uh, and indeed, when we shot the pilot, I can remember receiving my clue. Uh, we all got clues on that first pilot programme, and mine was uh, an extract from the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. Uh, which is one reason why the pilot never went out, because that format, they quite rightly decided, was not appropriate. And so when we went to Athelney and Much Wenlock in the very early days, we had basically the format that's continued so successfully right up to the present. When we first came together in the early days, it was apparent even to us that we were quite an eccentric mix of characters. And I don't think really that's changed. To a degree, also, it's become a, a, almost a kind of mini soap opera in terms of the relationships between those eccentric characters. Uh, and when you add the, the incredible format of the programme in bringing archaeology to life, showing it as it happens, those two aspects I don't think have been brought out in any other comparable uh, television programme that I've ever seen. That's what makes it unique. That, I think, explains why it is still such a profound success after ten years. I can't think of any other programme that's had that longevity uh, and that has all the promise for carrying on into the future. At Langorse, we were looking for things that, quite frankly, we didn't find. OK, there were things like the shale ring and the, the odd uh, early cell in the churchyard and so on. But things like the D-shaped field that we were pursuing and a number of other aspects just didn't materialise. And the programme, I think in, in, in the final analysis, was saved with, the, uh, with Phil's dugout canoe. Um, and yet, that programme won the City of Baal Prize for the best educational television programme in Europe. And yet, we didn't find what we were after. And that shows that it is the process by which one investigates a site that is the fascination of Time Team, not necessarily digging up Tutankhamun's death mask. When we started out, uh, we were not uh, accomplished, polished television performers. Uh, and I think uh, successive directors did have a crack at the kind of cinema verite approach uh, eavesdropping on conversations when the archaeologists and indeed the historians would prefer to give a considered judgment that maybe had to be honed uh, with several takes. Uh, an exception to that, I remember, was Temple Coon, where when it was almost too late, I realised that the archaeologists hadn't taken account of the tithe map and tithe-free land. In other words, we'd been digging in the wrong place. Um, Mick, uh, when he realised that this was being filmed, because it was, a, it was an actual discussion, a dispute, in fact, that broke out, endeavoured by the use of various expletives to ensure that the piece was never used. And I understand that on, for a decision on this, it went right to the top of Channel 4 as to whether certain words could be broadcast before the watershed. And, in fact, the piece was included and I think remains one of the classic elements in Time Team. I mean, the, the fascination for me as a historian delivering the historical context for the archaeologists was crucial to my role. And I got much, I like to think, much more of a fair crack of the whip in those early days before the sites became so complex and we tackled ever larger problems uh, that we had to try and solve. Uh, the, the one that immediately springs to mind is um, Isla, uh, where I'd carefully mugged up the story of the Lord of the Isles and the whole flipping site then turned prehistoric and almost, not entirely, but almost my entire contribution uh, got junked. And uh, th there were times, there have been times, I have to say, when I, I, I used to wish that I was on a history programme rather than an archaeological programme because uh, inevitably uh, the history tended to get sidelined or either that or was recorded and then got junked uh, and ended up on the cutting room floor. And... Uh, Inevitably, 
uh, when you've sat around for sometimes a day or even two days waiting to do some uh, make, a, make a contribution, uh, it is incredibly frustrating. Uh, but that's life. I think the highlights of, this, of all the series uh, for me, one I would pick out is uh, High Wurzel, the DMV, the Deserted Medieval Village where I reckon I, I wrapped it up completely, solved when the village was abandoned, in my speech on the edge of the trench at the very end of the th third day. And also, that was the same shoot where I won the crew sweepstake on the international football match. The other occasion was uh, Maryland in America when we investigated St Mary's City, the very early Roman Catholic uh, settlement site. And I went out with, with Mick and Tony on the, the Dove, the replica 17th century sailing vessel, and actually took the tiller as we sailed past these manicured millionaires' lawns under beautiful sunshine. Uh, that, that was a magical moment, and I shall never forget it. The earliest document that I remember, or certainly the one that impressed me most, uh, were the York Gospels that were brought in for me on the York Live that we did. And it was a, a, a large volume, but I remember turning to the back uh, in the presence of the archivist of the, uh, who brought them in and finding a letter from King Canute, Knut, uh, in the back. And I think that was, that was, that was a really magical moment. Uh, the earliest, I mean, we've got documents that I've handled in other contexts, but I don't think they've appeared on screen. Uh, I, I love touching Anglo-Saxon charters. Uh, they're magic. You know, they speak to you from uh, a far distant past. Um, and we've never obviously turned up uh, a complete inscription. We've, we've found the odd word on, on the odd artefact. Um, but I remember coming into contact in Bath with curses that had been written on pewter and copper sheets uh, and then thrown into the sacred spring. And these are uh, true voices from uh, a remote Roman past. They found about 90 of them in the Sacred Spring. And there you find uh, details of so -so, whoever has stolen my cloak, uh, let him bleed from the nose and vomit blood and so on. And, and they're so immediate in terms of people from a far distant age uh, that I love them to bits. There was one occasion when I did take up a mattock. I think that's what the technical term for it. And it was when we did the, uh, the Fugu at Le Morne. It was following up uh, another lost site of uh, an underground tunnel. And uh, we were short on personnel to actually uh, uncover it towards the very end of the programme. And I remember both myself and uh, John Gator and Chris Gaffney uh, actually seized tools and set about it. The only snag was that the camera uh, person in question decided that uh, before we discovered it, uh, it was time for their knocking off. And so that scene of me uh, wielding uh, this, this mattock on the harsh, unyielding Cornish soil never saw the light of broadcast day. I've always found the, the Time Team website, uh, particularly the forum, uh, where people, you know, log in and answer, ask questions. Uh, a wonderful contact with uh, not necessarily your average viewer, but certainly your most enthusiastic viewer. Um, and that way you actually touch base with the people uh, that you've been com communicating with through the screen. What's been most rewarding, however, is when you find people who've posted on the forum to say that their lives were quite literally changed by, by the programme. People that have gone on, and there have been quite a number of them over the years, who've said that solely because of the programme they have taken up careers or degrees or whatever in either archives or archaeology. And there's a wonderful sense of warmth when you, when you, you, you find someone like that uh, who you have helped to guide to fulfil their fascination, their desires, their needs for, an, a, 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 ostensibly, an academic subject. That's incredibly rewarding. The impact that Time Team's had on me uh, is that inevitably you get recognised as you, uh, you know, you go, go round. 
Um, particularly, I've found, when I'm on holiday with my wife Hilary in the Mediterranean. Uh, I remember being recognised three times on Rhodes, uh, eight times on Crete, and certainly four times on Cyprus this last year. It doesn't happen, happen often enough to be onerous. It's just rather pleasant. In England, I found out that it tends to happen on isolated ferries off the uh, west coast of Scotland, or particularly in uh, motorway service stations in the Midlands. And they always come up to you in an accusatorial fashion. You're that bloke from Time Team. They don't often remember your name. I shall never forget one occasion when we were filming near Wootton Bassett in Wiltshire. And uh, I'd carefully stowed my research books in the, in the boot, hung up my shirts in the back of the car, and headed off. And uh, I got there only to find out that I'd managed to leave my suitcase, or my bow ties and everything, on the landing back home. So after we'd had the production meeting and dinner, it must have been about half past eleven, I headed on back to Taunton, M4, M5. I picked up the case, heading back, and coming past Clevedon, I had my, I have to be honest, there was nothing else on the road. I had my foot well down. And suddenly the blue light comes on in the background and pulls me over. Wind down the window. And this peaked cap and beard uh, poked in and he says, uh, Don't you think 90 miles an hour is a bit excessive, Mr Bush? Crumbs, you think. He said, you don't recognise me, do you? I said, no. He said, West Somerset Morris men, he said. It turns out, three weeks before, I'd been comparing Taunton Cider's wassailing ceremony, and he'd been one of the high kickers with all... <laughs> I mean, it's the only... He, he then turned to me, he said, Drive on, he said, and he winked, and keep it down. It's the only time involvement in Time Team has enabled me to pull even the semblest of a slight string. <laughs>